Welcome back to the Colossal Color Showdown. This is the part two of looking at burnt umber. In this video, we're going to be testing the gradation, the salt test, and how it mixes with other colors. In terms of gradation, I was actually quite surprised at how prone to cauliflowering these colors are. And now, if you've never experienced cauliflowering using burnt umber on your own painting, that's totally normal. I go out of my way to try to create the cauliflower. So if a beginner using cheap paper and don't know about what to control, you know, what colors would be better for them and easier for them. For example, Burnt Amber by Daniel Smith, it, they gradate really well. You see four very clear different sections, which is what you want to see in this test, because it means that you're going to have the most control over your colors and your gradation. Whereas if you're gonna start off with colors like Mission Gold, that's gonna suffer from a lot of color firing or even schminke. So maybe leave that till you get better paper and better at water control. So that's what this test sheet is about. And as I said, Daniel Smith performs really well, no color firing, four clear stages. Winds and Newton does pretty well as well. Four clear stages, slightly messy here, but I think that's a theme of this whole color. So I think we can forgive Winds and Newton for that. Really nice four clear stages. So these two are top notch in terms of doing the gradation. After that, you get colors like Embraer, which this is pretty similar all the way through up until the middle. And then this is pretty similar. That's not what you want because then you're not in control. You can't create the stages of gradation that you want to create. And it's kind of similar stories everywhere. There's, there's usually either two or only three different color stages. Old Holland isn't bad, but it gets really, really pale down here, whereas you still want some color happening in this lower middle half of the swatch. In terms of cauliflowering, Schminke, Holbein, and Mission Gold, Da Vinci, and a little bit Romish Mall just here, it happened. But also it depends on what you're looking for because this is a really interesting texture and it'll be a great background. You get this granulation of the darker brown happening and you get that in quite a few of these colors you get it in m Graham, but not quite as much you get it in da vinci you get it in the sennelier you get it in very subtly in the core as well let's take a look at the salt test next and we got more reaction. I was quite happy, especially with the M. Graham was like, okay, so these tests do still work and it's not just me doing something wrong. You get a nice reaction here of all the feathering. Maybe I'm putting too much salt on these days. I'm just going a bit too happy with it. Maybe I'll try to do less salt. Schminke reacts to it as well, pretty well, but there are other colors that does nothing at all, such as Sennelier does nothing. Windsor and Newton, Quar, My Merry Blue, I think that's about it. Those don't react at all. And then other brands react a little bit, but not hugely as much as M. Graham. So if you want to do that salt effect, then get that core effect that the salt has, then definitely go for the M. Graham. Finally, we have the color mixes. And the complementary color to the Burnt Umber is the Ultramarine Blue. In this case, I just picked the ultramarine blue that I have on my palette, which is the ultramarine blue finest by Sennelier. And then we have the usual primaries, the cadmium yellow light by Holbein, the quinacridone rose by Daniel Smith and thalo blue yellow shade by Holbein. And I just love all the colors that gets created by this. You might be thinking, Otto, these aren't quite complementary. They look quite blue. That's because with ultramarine blue, when you mix with any color, really, because it's so heavily granulating, even though it looks pretty gray and pretty well mixed on your palette, and even when you put it down on paper, once they dry, the colors are going to separate. So it is going to take a more bluer hue as it dries. And you can definitely see really strong blues coming through here. Whereas colors like 
the Windsor Newton one is a little bit, it remains a little bit more muted and more greyish and same with the old Holland one. They are two colours. This test sheet was really interesting for me because it really showed how varied the tinting strengths of these different brands are. And I would say that second to obviously finding the right hue for yourself, the tinting strength is going to be your deciding factor in which brand to go for. The two highest one was here, the Schmincke and the Mission Gold. Not surprised that the Mission Gold was the highest tinting strength and it was considerably higher tinting strength than any of the other colors because they've thrown in that PY150, that's always going to make things stronger and higher tinting strength. And that creates very awesome autumnal palettes they all do but some are a little bit more eastery so for example this is like a more country easter feeling whereas this is like definitely in the autumn and then this is like more spring time kind of again easter time but a little bit even paler but each one of these color schemes that each of these brands created has been lovely and, and I love them and if you ever wanted to create a mustard color I don't know why we don't have mustard as a color in watercolor because I think it's an awesome color and yes it is easy to mix just like look at these you get such a wide variety of mustards just by mixing a yellow with a little bit of brown of your choice whether that's burnt umber or any other brown color you can get mustard but i would just love to have a brand create mustard as a color because it would be such a convenient color to have on my palette but i am sidetracking the lowest tinting strengths colors Old Holland by far was the lowest tinting stress, which wasn't surprising to me because the mass tone, as we saw in the last episode, it was pretty noticeably lighter than most other brands. So not a big surprise there. However, the Engrea and My Mirror Blue also turned out to be pretty low in tinting strengths. Not the lowest, but still quite low compared to the other colours, which was a surprise because those, the masters, were quite comparable to other brands. I would say that Sennelier actually gave like the brightest kind of, more clear, most clearest colour mixes out of these four colours, which I think is quite interesting. So, yeah, again, it depends on what your color scheme is in general in artists. If you're going for the deep dark colors, then go for Mission Gold or Schmincke. I would advise you on going for Schmincke over Mission Gold because I would say the Mission Gold is a little bit too tuned up. And I always say this about Mission Gold. A lot of their colors, they just feel like they went a little hard on turning up the saturation you know like an oversaturated photo mission gold to me feels like that a lot of the time and that is true for this case whereas the schminke one it goes down nice and smooth and it's quite high tinting strength so if you have other high tinting strengths color then in your palette then this is great however holbein which i said was the most smoothest one on the Academ Fabiana Academia paper and I love how clear this yellow is and I just love I mean I love all of these colors they're all gorgeous colors so that's it for burnt umber before I talk about which one's my favorite I just want to let you guys know in case you missed it in the last video we do have the companion dot card for this month's color of burnt umber. It has eight colors, Densmith, Holbein, Snellier, Windsor Newton, Mission Gold, Schmincke, Core and Da Vinci. If you'd like to receive this, as always, sign up over on patreon.com forward slash autocarno and sign up to the appropriate tier. And then you will receive this on your doorstep very, very soon. And then you can find your own personal favorite burnt umber. So which burnt umber is my favorite? Well, I'm always looking for paint that goes down smooth. In that term, Holbein definitely went down really well. For burnt umber, actually, we have a pretty good range of colors that went down smoothly. Normally on cheap paper like this, most brands suffer from streakiness. But for burnt umber, I mean, Holbein, Schmincke, M. Graham, Roman Schmal, and core have done fantastically smooth. I 
I would say that these four are the best and then like the core and the mission gold is second best in terms of going down smoothly and by far these two the Holbein and the Schmincke being top notch on how smooth they go down also with the high tinting strength of the Schmincke one I'm a big fan of this color however I'm also a big fan of the color that the Holbein creates so I'm like is it worth taking out a color that I already have on my palette and really like using for another color that works pretty similar and also the mixes they looked a little bit muddy if I can use that word whereas the Holbein one looked a little bit more clear to me and I really like bright clear colors but as I always say it just depends on what you're looking for if you are looking for that little bit more muted colors then, uh, but still high tinting strengths, then obviously Schmincke is going to be perfect. If you do have a lower tinting strengths palette, then things like Old Holland, My Mary Blue and M. Graham, because they are lower tinting strengths, is going to work a lot better for you. Especially if you have super weak tinting strengths ones, then the Old Holland is going to get on way better. I know it has its problems, but in terms of color mixing, the tinting strengths are going to win out in terms of what's going to get on with your palette and you'll probably learn to work around the problems that the old holland color may have so which color did you like best did you have a color you liked before this video and then have you changed your mind since watching these two videos if so do let me know in the comments down below or if you have a diehard burnt umber favorite color then also do let us know and like why you like that color because you guys have so much knowledge and it would be awesome to share that in the community in the comment section and so i in advance i will thank you guys for taking the time to let us know why you like these colors thank you so much for watching this video in next month is the final month of the season two of colossal color showdown i can't believe we've been doing this for nine months now it'll be 10 months by next months i nearly said yeah and that final episode is going to be the pyro red which has been a highly requested color so do look out for that next month thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next video bye